Uh, during this homecoming week, um, we have scheduled Grove City College alumni to be our chapel speakers at all of our events. We have some really interesting individuals, and we have one of those individuals this morning. Uh, his name is Gret Glier. Uh, he's a graduate of the class of 2012, just four years ago. He was a member of uh, AEX uh, when he was here. Uh, he was also an RA, and he's used his entrepreneurship major uh, in a very incredible ministry. Uh, he is the founder of an organization known as Homes for Orphans and Widows in Malawi. And I'm excited to have Gret uh, as our chapel speaker this morning on this homecoming week. Uh, please welcome him to Harbison Chapel, Gret Glier. Hey guys, my name is Gret, like you said, and I graduated four years ago. Really excited to be here today. Um, I need to apologize. Uh, I usually am like super prepared. I have like really intricate PowerPoint presentations and it's like really well timed and all that stuff. Uh, not today. I launched um, a project yesterday that I'll tell you about at the end of this presentation. Um, and you'll get to hear all about that. But in the, in the moment, uh, for the moment, I've got um, just this, just me talking for the presentation. So, um, four years ago when I graduated, I started working at Enterprise Rent a Car. They recruited me from the career fair. And I was there for about six months when I was promoted. I was promoted faster than anyone else in the company had ever been promoted before. And um, after being promoted, they changed the bylaws so no one could ever be promoted that fast again. So I have this like weird record with Enterprise Rent a Car. <laughs> and uh, I was in this place where uh, you know, I was promoted super quick. Um, and I had these, uh, these guys in the company who were telling me I'm going to be fast tracked. I'm going to like rise to the ranks of the company really quick. It'd only be a couple of years before like I'd have a company car and I'd be able to like six figure paycheck, just cushy job, that kind of stuff. Um, and I was looking at the trajectory of my life and I was so depressed. And I'm not just saying that, like I was actually depressed because I was, I was looking at like, okay, the next 20 years of my life, what's that gonna look like? If I stay at Enterprise and I do this job and I make all this money, I'm, 20 years from now, I'm gonna be really, really good at renting cars. And I, I couldn't stand that though. I couldn't stand like, okay, 20 years from now, this is gonna be my contribution to society that I, um, I'm, I have like rented cars to thousands of people or I, I'm a manager over people who have rented cars to people. I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't wanna do it. So I started applying to different mission organizations and that's a story in and of itself, but one thing led to another and eventually um, I ended up being a teacher in Malawi, Africa. And uh, I, I, I got there and, and I, I landed in Malawi. I, I don't know a single other person in the country and I'm teaching at this international school. And it's this, um, it's this weird thing because I'm in a third world country. Malawi, in 2015, Malawi was the poorest country in the world. Like this is, these are people who are making less than a, a dollar a day, a lot of them. But I was, living, I was living on this international school campus. So like we had like a swimming pool on our campus and a few other things that made it, not, made it feel like, oh, this isn't that, this isn't that bad. Um, and I became friends with a guy named Blessings. And so after, after a couple months, Blessings came up to me and, or I came up to, I went up to Blessings and I said, hey, Blessings, if you ever need uh, help with anything, just let me know. I mean, I don't know what I can do, but let me know. And so he's, he said, okay, and Blessings like grew up in the village, like he was like a real Malawi, he, he, knew, uh, he knew his way around the country. And after a week, Blessings came up to me and he said, hey, Gret, I've got, something, I've got something to show you. And I said, sure, let's do it. So the next day, Blessings picked me up in his truck and I didn't know where we were going. And we went down this uh, tarmac asphalt road for 30 minutes and then uh, we went for another 20 minutes uh, down some dirt roads and we, um, we're like going along, you know, there's like the, the Serengeti trees uh, uh, as we're driving along and we pull up to this village and this big like chief character comes out of his house and he shakes my hand and he doesn't speak any English and he's talking to me in Chichewa and uh, I'm just like smiling <laughs> and um, for the first time like I, I started to feel like oh man this is actually, this is like Africa right, this is like the real deal and so I'm, I, I don't know, I still don't know what the situation is and, and uh, Blessings starts walking and I just follow him and uh, we're walking through this village and there's, uh, there's 
houses with uh, like grass thatch roofs and there's like naked kids playing in the dirt and um, there's like people making uh, their lunch over like a fire, like a fire on the ground, not like a stove. Um, and I, I was just, I was like soaking it all in. Like I'm in Africa, I'm like the only white guy for a long ways. And um, I'm following blessings and I still know what we're doing. And um, off in the distance, as we're going through this village, I see this, uh, this old lady. And she's, she's like kneeling down. And when she sees me and blessings coming, uh, she has this stick next to her and she takes the stick and she like lifts herself up. She's so old. And she started hobbling towards us and me and Blessings were walking towards her. So she's hobbling towards us and we're walking towards her. As soon uh, as she came up to us, she fell back to her knees and she put her hand out to shake my hand. And so I shook it and I said, Blessings, like, why, why am I here? Why did you want to show this to me? And um, Blessings said that he talked to all of the chiefs in the surrounding area. And he asked them, uh, like, who is the most vulnerable person in all of these villages, this village complex. And they all agreed that it was this, this lady named Rosina. And I was like, well, what's, what's wrong with her? I, I, like, what, what's the deal? I mean, it, it's visible, like she was, it, you, just by looking at her, you, you could tell um, this isn't a good situation. So I asked, what, what's wrong? And Blessing said, oh, she hasn't eaten in a week. So I said, okay, let's get her some food. That's an easy fix, right? How much, is, like, how much would it cost to feed her for a month? And he said, seven bucks. So I was like, okay, I think I got seven bucks. Um, so is that it? Are we done? And uh, Blessings said, well, not really. Uh, rainy season is coming in a month. And I know you guys have like really bad weather here, right? I went here for four years. Um, the, the weather in Malawi during rainy season is like torrential downpour, monsoon, like Jumanji style. It's like really, really bad. And so, um, the situation was if, if we don't get this, uh, this rainy season is coming in a month, and Blessing said she doesn't have a house. So if she doesn't get a house in the next month, she's in big trouble, like really big trouble. And I asked him, okay, well, how much does a house cost? And I'm thinking, okay, so like I'm from Northern Virginia. It's like a pretty wealthy area. Like a, a four bedroom house is like half a million dollars. So I'm thinking, okay, house is going to be like 10, 20,000, right? And I asked him, how much is the house? I mean, I don't know if I can do this. And he said it was 800 bucks to build her a house. So I was like, wow, that was how much my last iPad cost. It's interesting. <laughs> and so I gave Blessings this camera, and I, um, and I said, all right, here's what we're going to do. You're going to film me. I'd never made a video before. I said, you're going to film me. Uh, I'm going to show, uh, in the video, I'm going to show this lady, Rosina. I'm going to tell people at home about the situation, and we're going to raise the money for her. And so uh, Blessings filmed me, and I, I made the whole video, and um, I put some music to it, and I sent it out to my friends back at home. And I needed to raise 800 bucks. And guess how much I raised? $100. And I've been through some really hard things over the last three years. I've lived in Malawi, third world country, for the last three years. I've seen some tough stuff. I'm, I'm, I mean, like, I've seen, like, close friends almost die. I mean, like, really bad situations. And that day, when I only raised $100 for this lady named Rosina, was one of the hardest days of my entire life. Because for the first time, I think I like really understood that maybe the rest of the world doesn't care as much as I do about this stuff. It was really, really, really hard. So, I recoup myself, and you can pick it up, that's fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so I recoup myself, and I, uh, I, I wrote a long blog post, and I explained to people exactly where the money's going, and I made pie charts and stuff, and I kept bugging my friends, and eventually the $800 came in, and we, uh, we built the house for her, and the house was finished. We put a roof on the house the day before uh, the very first rain of the very first like really bad rain of the season, so it was like a really cool thing. We were like really really uh, excited to see that happen. And then something funny happened. That we we built her a house, and I took pictures of it and video, and I sent it back to all, all the people who donated, and they thought it was really cool to see. You know, wow, like we built a house for eight hundred bucks. That's really neat. And people wanted to like keep sending me money. 
Um, not me, but you know, four houses. And so uh, people kept sending money, and I kept finding um, widows or orphans who needed housing. And I'm really proud uh, to tell you guys that um, over the last three years, we've built over 100 houses for orphans and widows. And then after that, we um, uh, most recently, we built a, a girls' school. We, we fundraised $100,000 to build a girls' school. Um, we started that in January. We finished the fundraising for that like a month ago, and there's girls in school today because of that. And I shared that story with you, and I had uh, my friend read James 127 um, because uh, I want to... I want to say something that I, I feel like isn't said very much, but really, um, really should be. And so... Um, I've done all this cool stuff over the last three years, and it's, it's been really fun to do that. Um, and I went to Grove City for four years, and it was very formative. It was a very, very, uh, I learned, it, it developed me a lot as a person, it developed me a lot very spiritually. But there's a, a trap in academics um, that you should know about, and the trap is that sometimes um, we, we get tricked into thinking, because we're sitting in front of chalkboards all day, that that just thinking about stuff the exact right way or just spending time contemplating things is enough and it's it's not um, and when the bible talks about to whom much is given much is expected uh, i really encourage you guys to go to a website called globalrichlist.com um, and figure out where you rank in the world because i i'm almost certain everyone in this room um, in terms of uh, privilege and, and wealth and so forth and, and your position in society, I'm pretty sure everyone, every single person in this room would rank in the global 1%. So you have more money than 1% of the world. And, and uh, if you want to know how much money you need to make uh, a year to be richer than half of the world, it's 400 bucks. If you make $400 in a year, not a month, in a year, then you're richer than 50% of the world automatically. So there's this whole other world that we don't know about or don't, uh, don't think about very often, I think it's important that we do. And if you're sitting in your pew thinking, like, if your immediate thought is trying to qualify why this, why, why that Bible verse, to whom much is given, much is expected, if you're trying to sit there and think why it doesn't apply to you, um, I think it applies to you more than anyone else in this room. And so... Uh, this is like a super short talk. I don't have time to, to go into everything that I would love to say. But um, I really hope that this provokes some discussion. And uh, I really hope that you guys are able to um, continue talking about yourself. And if you want, you guys can email me or reach out to me on Facebook or Twitter or anything like that. My email is brettglier at gmail.com. And um, I've got this video that I want to play for you guys. Uh, this is this is like my next project. So first we did like all those houses, and then we did um, the girls' school, and then yesterday, yesterday we launched uh, this project, and I've been working really hard on it for the last six months. Uh, so I've got like a three-minute video to show you, and it would really mean a lot um, if you could. There's some instructions at the end of the video, so it would really mean a lot if you could um, help me out in terms of like sharing it and passing it around. So thank you guys for your time. I think they're about to play the video. Any moment. Go. We raised money for a bike for a lady named Rose. Two years ago, we raised money for a house for Emily and Chisomo. One year ago, we raised money to help rid an entire village of malaria. And most recently, we raised money for a girls' school in a rural Malawian village. The bike cost sixty dollars. The house one thousand dollars. The nets nine thousand, and the girls' school one hundred thousand. We went from changing one person's life with $60 to changing a generation of real people living in Malawi with $100,000. And today, we're going even bigger. My name is Gret, and I hope you'll join me in literally changing the world forever by the end of this year, 2016. We have 96 days to make this happen, and I'll explain how we're going to do it in just a minute. Right now, giving to charity is about as much fun as doing your homework. In fact, think back to the last time you gave. Chances are you received a thank you email and that's about it. That's why for the last six months, me and my team have been secretly working on an app that helps donors see the impact their money makes when they give. It's called DonorSee. 
There are Peace Corps workers, aid workers, and missionaries living in every corner of the globe. And all of them live around vulnerable people who could use some help meeting their basic needs. We've designed our app to make it easier than ever before to fundraise for these needs. All you have to do is add a picture, the story, the amount, and then share. But here's what we do different. Not only is it easier to post about needs, but it's also easier for donors to see what happens to their money when needs are funded. Imagine someone like Nicole posts about a boy named Weissen who needs a wheelchair. 10 people donate to that project, and afterwards, those same 10 people get a notification straight to their phone showing how their small amount of money changed the life of a boy in Malawi. Donorcy gets your money to real people in really urgent situations in real time. So now that you know what Donorcy is, let me tell you how we're going to use it to change the world. Our goal over the next 96 days is to get one funded need in every country on the planet. If you know someone living abroad who would be good at using this app, Tag them in the comments of this video. We're not going to stop until we leave our footprint in every country on the planet. Donor C. Give directly, see impact. Will you help us change the world? Here's what you can do. Number one, download Donorcy and start giving. It's really fun and addictive, I promise. Number two, tell your friends living abroad about our plan to literally change the world by the end of this year by tagging them in this video. And number three, share this video. Every time you click the share button, you create a ripple effect with endless potential. We have 96 days to make this happen. Join us. Thank you guys for your time, Chaplain Smith.